Hello, hello everyone, welcome to another video. Um, we're going to look at the video that was put out by World of Warships about the new submarine changes and um, see what they have in store for us. Um, of course, my name is Asmo, for those who don't know me yet, and I've played uh, plenty of submarines. Um, let's have a quick look here. Um, let's grab the 251 here. There we go. Um, in submarines, I've played over. I think over 2,000 games. I've had 241 on the uh, on 251 alone. What do I have on the 451? I wonder. Now I'm curious. Now I'm curious. Uh, the 4501. Oh, there you are. Yeah, also 261. Yeah, we got we got some ships played, and of course, uh, you might see the win rate um, 62%. Um, 60%. I mean, I, I love my German submarines. They're awesome. Anyways, uh, there are some changes with submarines, which are uh, we're going to look into. And uh, let's have a look there and see what we think of this. Big changes that you've been waiting for are coming. We always do our best to listen to our community. We are aware that there are some pain points and we've already started the process of solving them. As part of this, Captain, get ready for some impactful changes to submarines and anti-submarine warfare in World of Warships. I'm gonna steal that bit, that, that that picture over there for my uh, for my thumbnail. <laughs> we will steal it. Yes. Our overall aim is to make the interactions between different ship types more intuitive and straightforward. In particular, our goal has been to implement additional countermeasures for all battle participants. That That's a good change because uh, a lot of times the biggest frustration I notice from people playing against submarines, and also I play against submarines myself a lot, um, is that people don't know how to fight them don't use their ways they have to fight them they just don't bomb or don't hydro or don't radar or stuff like that uh, and that people just feel like when you when you drop your bombs they don't really know where a submarine is because you couldn't see the ping in time and you miss your bombs and do it a few times you just feel like your efforts are wasted which i understand and it requires some skill to learn to improve that also um, a good thing is to play submarines so you know how they react and you know where you would go so you can predict where they will go. And very important, so it's something I do a lot. So I can quite, quite reliably kill any submarine that gets against me. I mean, there are of course options where you can't fight back. If there's a lot of enemies shooting you as well, then you die. But uh, I, I can usually lure them out and get them killed, if, if, even if I'm a battleship, a cruiser, destroyer, doesn't really matter. Uh, the easiest ships to fight submarines in are CVs, because they have automatic ASW, which never ever misses. And also perfectly hits on uh, things like oil slicks, which usually you know, people can't ever hit a submarine when they see a slick. But the CVs just get it automatically, so yeah. Anyways, um, a few more less frustrating ways to deal with submarines. Let's see what they uh, have installed. That's why we've slightly changed the functionality of anti-submarine defenses of surface ships. The Venezia and Hindenburg branches, excluding Montecuccoli, as well as Prince Olgen and Admiral Schroeder, have received depth charge airstrike in place of the depth charges they were previously equipped with. Tier Very important, more airstrike depth charges is good because that's the funnest way and the safest way to deal with submarines. If you have drop down depth charges, then usually you can't fight submarines. Usually you can't. You can still shoot them with your guns, and by all means do so when they are 10 meters or above that depth. Um, but yeah, I think every single cruiser should have flying ASW. I think the only ships with drop down air, uh, with drop down um, depth charges, should be the destroyers. And beyond that, they should all have planes because they're just more fun to play easy to get to and just yeah it gives a better experience i think so that's my two cents also that in these two cruiser lines the dutch are excluded i think i i really hate because <laughs> we really need some extra ways to fight submarines man we have the worst kind of depth charges or our a or accuracy is awful so we can't even hit it if we see it on the surface so yeah the, the, the dutch need some help against submarines they do they really do anyways five and seven battleships as well as ohio thunderer jean bar and jean bar b have received an increase in their depth charge airstrike range and uh, very important this one this was something that irked me for quite some time where was my jean bar jean bar's like to sit nose in 
and then you just shoot and just reverse, go forward, reverse. That's usually what I want to do. To show as little side as possible, I just use all the guns. Uh, not really feasible against, uh, for example, the uh, English destroyers with the single launch torpedoes. Submarines are the same way, where they can easily hit the chumbars at nose in. So the chumbars had only 5km radius on their, uh, on their planes. It was really awful. So the, these buffs right here are really good. The one thing I'm missing though is Musashi. It still has a 5 kilometer range on the uh, on the submarine on the airstrikes, which is awful. Everything above tier tier nine should have at least the 11 kilometer range on them. The 10 kilometer is even not enough, but uh, 10 kilometer is fine compared to the five they had. But still, I think it should all have 11 kilometers. Anyway, good change. I wish they had it also for Masashi. Grange. Depth charge airstrike and tier five through seven battleships and cruisers now has a shorter cooldown. For tier five and six battleships and cruisers, the bomb damage was slightly reduced. This means so you get less damage on the bombs at uh, tier five and lower, or tier six and lower cruisers, I believe. But you do get more reloads of them, which is a very good thing. I would say overall that is a buff, because when you fight submarines. The damage of your bombs is cool and all, but the most damage you do is with the fires and the floods. And you get more chance to proc those when you have more uh, have faster reloads. So that's really good. And the damage themselves doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it does do damage and is important, but it's mostly about the fires and floods that I've noticed. As when I play submarine, that those are things that actually kill me. The bomb damage usually doesn't, unless the water is saturated with 10 people bombing and then you die anyway. So, you know. That shouldn't change. So, I think overall a good buff. Which is more chance to, to proc that fire and or flood. Which is a good change. Means you can also gives you more chance to learn to aim for them. So you have more chance to be lucky, you know. Utilize depth charge airstrike more frequently, but with less damage per use. The Venezia, Zhao and Yodo branches have received the submarine surveillance consumable... Really important change this one. This one is really fun because they do not have, as you can see here, there's a cooldown time, but there is not a preparation time. So they get submarine surveillance before the submarines themselves get it. Therefore, if they can get close enough, and these are some stealthy ships, some even with uh, fuel smoke, so they can get real close. And 7 kilometers is a good radius. 20 second activation time, really nice. And this has killed me quite some time already. That's a pretty good change, especially that it is for cruiser lines, which are um, mainline ships, so they don't cost money. They could have put it on only premiums, they didn't. They put it on lines that, that actually need some buffs, especially the German line. Sorry, uh, I'm lying, not the German line. The, uh, the Japanese light cruiser line, it, it, it was kind of lacking in, 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 in uh, utility. And it could use a buff, so that's a good buff for that line. So I, I really like this in the game. This is a really fun thing. I do now need to keep track, of course, when I go to match, uh, what, what ships do have submarine surveillance, because uh, I'll get caught out. <laughs> it will happen. But it's a good change, especially that it's on the free ships, not on anything you have to buy for. So good change. In a separate slot, which was previously available only to submarines. Despite the changes to the anti-submarine defenses of surface ships, we want to maintain the current combat capability level of submarines. Submarine combat capability is pretty low. It's I play a lot of subs, and it is also the ship type in which I get the most games with zero damage done. Because you are reliant upon torpedoes. Torpedoes are slower than shells. When your team is good and you are spotting the target, the allies will kill the ship before torpedoes arrive. Usually. So oftentimes, even when you do well, even when you do all you can, uh, you just get zero damage games. That happens. Because you're reliant upon torpedoes. Also, torpedoes, especially homing ones, as soon as you ping an enemy, that enemy is now controlled for torpedoes. You are not any, lo any longer. Those torpedoes, you can't do anything against them. Your enemy can. So if your enemy is good, he can dodge all of those torpedoes. For, uh, for reference, for those who don't know, um, there's a different... Uh, ooh, let's uh, make that uh, black there. Yeah. We, there is a... Um, a a 2.1 kilometer. Can I get... That, that, that. Nah. 2.1 kilometer radius around your battleship that you cannot get hit 
by oh, that that uh, torpedo stop homing. So if a torpedo comes in, being launched from a submarine over here, for example, and he pings you. Oh, that's. Uh, He pings you, then you get this square here is being pinged. This is where your, where your torpedoes will go for. So if your torpedoes then, they will be launched, they go there and they try to hit that. If you get these at the 2.1 kilometer radius from you, that's the point usually when you can see them. So when you can see them, disappearing your the home is no longer useful for battleships because that's already too late. What you want to do is then uh, move into the torpedo's path, so they, they go around, and then move your ship out of the way. And these torpedoes will just sail past your ship while you are then... Uh, I can't really show it here, but you are done in this position here. So, yeah, just... just Whenever you see torpedoes, start to slow down, because it makes you turn faster. Turn your ship away, and you can usually let the torpedoes just sail right past your ship. And that's a pretty easy way to dodge them. Uh, whether you're nose in or nose out, doesn't matter. So, yeah, at this point, your enemy is in control of your torpedoes. And that makes it hitting them a lot harder. So, let's go back to this one. So, yeah, a, a lot of factors are involved in the combat capability of submarines. And they are kind of the worst class for... Combat capabilities, of course they can spot, and spotting is really powerful in this game. But damage to themselves is not something they're the best at. That battleship is still way better at that. So there we go. And so the combat capability of the submarine should be should be retained. To facilitate this, here are the balance changes we've made to submarines. The working principle of the hydrophone consumable, which is available to all submarines, has changed. They, they say this after they say they have to give uh, the combo capabilities of the submarines uh, the proper now on, it'll proper allow you still. to instantly highlight ships within range. So now, it used to be when you see this ping around uh, rolling forward on the ground, it used to be that that would be the radius at which you would see things popping up on the surface. No longer, now you can see them instantly and also... Regardless of terrain and even if they are behind islands. Behind island spotting. I hate that. I really hate that. Submarines don't need it. And it's another way to make islands less and less useful. There's already hydros and raiders to go through islands, which is stupid. Because it removes the whole gameplay about hiding around, shooting over islands and being unspotted for as long as you can. The whole gameplay around that is getting more and more encroached upon. And this is something that, that should not... There's no need for it to see through islands. It's, islands are there... And, and normally with a submarine you would not know who would be behind you, so you have to be careful, you have to be on the water, you can't see anything on the water. So you have to quickly pop up your periscope to see, hey, is there someone? And they could spot you and then kill you. That's the whole tension in there that's now gone, because you can just press this button, and you can instantly see, hey, there's someone behind it. And you can attack, and you can react appropriately. So, it takes away tension, takes away, takes away tactics from enemies to counteract you. Uh, not fun. Not needed. I think it should be removed from also crew, also from um, radars and hydros. You can activate it while surfaced, as well as at the periscope or operational depths. But it'll only spot the ships that are at periscope depth or on the surface. The consumable functionality has become more similar to hydroacoustic search and surveillance radar. It will make it more difficult for submarines to shotgun surface ships. And this is untrue. Because submarines don't really use submarines, uh, sorry, the hydrophone here, to spot the ships on the surface to shotgun them. They already know that they are because they were spotted by teammates, by carriers, by radars, by hydros. They can use it for this, but that's the case you don't really want to use it for. You want to use it for defense, to know, hey, can I go up and get some oxygen? To see if uh, an enemy who's getting close, if he, if you need to change course so he doesn't bomb right on top of you. Stuff like that. So, you can use it for attack, but usually it's not used for that. It's it's not the main use case. So, they nerf... The, they, they try to nerf the attack capability for shotgunning effect, which I think is not such a big deal. Getting shotgun is annoying, but usually it means that you have been in position for way too long. And spot for way too long without trying to disengage. Of course, there are 
uh, there are changes to that. Not every situation is the same. And so, but oftentimes it just means you haven't been trying to get yourself out of uh, to get yourself into a safe position. You can't no longer sit around islands. I mean, carriers 